is Nancy Smith from the Paint and Find Studio. Welcome to our Thursday Facebook Live. I hope everyone is having a great day. It's beautiful in Baltimore. We had massive storms yesterday that went through. Of course, not like New Orleans, Louisiana and things, but um, today it's gorgeous and welcome. We're gonna have a good class today. I'm going to demonstrate how to make birch trees in a simple, easy, one-stroke way. This is a picture from my sister's house of her birch tree. And I was bringing it just to give an idea as I was getting on my apron and everything. When we, when we paint these, if you notice on birch trees, they have the black lines that go across. Some are from one side, some come from the other side. But then there's a lot of um, white space here. So when we're painting this for on the canvas, I'll, I'll concentrate on these darker areas. Now, I'm not painting as detailed as a real tree would be with all of these little lines here, but I, it makes a beautiful picture if we concentrate on the big lines and coming from both sides. So we'll get started here. I'm painting for art today a background that has um, goldish colors, I'm the yellows and the golds. And I'm going to be using the scruffy brush. So to discuss the scruffy for, the, for new people that haven't been here uh, before or are new to one stroke, with the scruffy brush, you do not paint with it wet. You always want to use a dry brush. And it's real fluffy. Um, so when you get a new brush, you want to make sure you pre pull out the bristles, get it, um, get them out like fluffy, actually is the only word I can think of. You could smash it in your hand. That will help a little bit like that. But you that's how you want your brush to look and you want to paint with it dry. The colors I'm using are multi-surface folk art. I'm, I have Pueblo, just need a little dot and i'm standing up for this part a lot of times when i'm painting um, it's easier for me to be standing i'll let you know when i go when i sit i'm having more daffodil yellow because that's the lighter color and i want more of that and then i have yellow ochre like i said these are all multi surface Put a little more than that. The Pueblo, you need just a very little bit. Now to load a brush, what I'm going to do is pounce into the puddles of paint. I'm going to start out with just the daffodil yellow. So I'm just going to take my brush, pounce into that puddle of paint. If you see, I got quite a bit on there. And then on my palette, bounce back and forth. I'm going to go do that one more time. What, why I'm starting with all yellow is that's a this is like a dominant color and that's what I want the center glow to have. So when I paint, I'm going straight up and down. And if you can hear, I'm pouncing very hard. So I just want to get some yellow background going there. Now I'm going to come back into the yellow, but now I'm going to go half of my brush into yellow ochre. I want yellow ochre here at the top, so I'm going to now pounce up and down. And if you notice, I'm pouncing up and down. I'm not going sideways like that. I'm not streaking it. But I'm also rotating the brush in my hand so I don't get like a row look where it's all yellow ochre and yellow. By moving my hand, going around and around, I can get um, a nice smooth look, a blended look. Also, I'm moving. I'm not staying placed in one area because when that happens, you get what we call mud. The paint gets very muddy. Now I notice I'm getting a little more yellow ochre than I want, so I'm gonna take my paper towel here and just wipe the excess off my brush and go back into straight daffodil yellow. I just want to lighten that up. I don't want all that yellow ochre. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go into full yellow down here. And I'm going fast because this isn't the focus of our lesson today, but it is important to know how to use the scruff, scruffy brush. I'm just going to go into a little bit of Pueblo because Pueblo is so dark on my palette, it pounds hard. I just did Pueblo down here at the bottom. I just wanted some darkness. Just thinking it would be nice to go have dark, the glow, and then some lighter at the top. Almost like a sunset look. There. You can play around with this forever, but don't, because like I said, you don't want it to get muddy. Now, so that's gonna be good. So I'm done with my brush, and just because I'm on camera and we're only going to be painting for less than an hour. I will set my brush into my water basin and I'll put it on this side of it where I have those paintbrush grooves and stick it there so the paint, the brush will stay wet while I'm going through our lessons here. We have some more people coming online. Okay. Uh, Katerina Ga, Ja. Oh, hi, hi. And also okay. Debbie Manetta. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. And Katharina, yes. Welcome, and Debbie, I'll see you tonight. Katharina is another student, and she's from Baltimore City. Okay, now you have to let this dry, and it takes anywhere from 15, 20 minutes. So just set it aside, or get out your blow dryer. But while it's drying, I want to tell you a little bit about the next step. What we're painting are five like trees, five um, tree trunks. Now, these are tree trunks. There's no, they're not straight. They're not exact. So it's very, very common to just paint, take your brush and paint the trunks. But if you like to have a pattern in your design or in your mind, and you want to draw out the patterns, what you would do is on your paper design your project and so it would be something like this let me move that out of the way looks a little um out of focus here there we go so what i did is yes you know i a lot of times just draw draw my or paint my lines on my canvas but this time i wanted to actually think about the design i wanted i you know i wanted some bigger trunks i wanted some little ones so i drew out my my design here on paper then you get what what is called tracing paper tracing paper um is also known as transparent parchment tracing paper comes in all different sizes, different brands. I just happen to have this brand with me today. Then you take your tracing paper, put it over your, this is mine that I've already done. You put it over your pattern and see how you can see through. So that way you, you can trace it easily onto this paper, which I did right here. The purpose of this is having it on here is now I can put it on top of my canvas and position it to exactly where I want, want it to be. So I have that one ready. I've already traced it, but I want to show you how I did that. So let's pretend like the lines aren't here yet. I put my pattern on top of my canvas. Then I have like painter tape, I put it down. The reason why you want to have painter tape or any type of, I wouldn't use scotch tape, but painter's tape, something like that. It holds your paper in place. So if you should move your arm or you drop something, everything is sturdy right here. You don't lose your design pattern. Then you get what we call tracing paper. This was used to be called carbon paper, but now it's tracing paper. 
And on one side, it has like the graphite look. And then the other side is a dull, darker look. So with the graph side, pet side down, I'm going to lift up my pattern, slip it between my canvas and, and then my pattern. Then I get a stylus. For me, a stylus works better than a pencil or a pen. It has that little ballpoint. Then while everything is stationary right here, I just go over my lines and trace them. What I do before I get too far, I hold everything in place, just pick up my paper to make sure that I have the right pressure that you really do see my tracing. Another thing that happens, sometimes people put the paper upside down and so they're tracing and they don't see anything and it's like, oh yes, because the graph site was on the paper side. So you go through, just trace all your paper all your pattern. What I do on all things, even simple lines like this, I pull my paper out and pick up. I don't take off my pattern yet. I leave it scotch taped, but then I look and see, okay, did I draw all my lines or am I missing anything? And in this case, no. So I can move on. But let's say you have um, a more complicated design, like you're doing a fruit basket and you notice that your, your apple wasn't traced. Because you taped it, you can just gently bring it back on, smooth it out, put your graphite paper back in, and then you can trace your apple. Okay, so we're done with that. So now I'm ready to paint. And like I mentioned, you can't do this until your surface is totally dry. Okay, this is the point I'm going to sit down, so give me a second here. And I don't know if I told you I put on my apron so I don't get paint on my t-shirt. My birch trees are going to be all white. Are you keep track of comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I, go, I talk so fast, but I, I want to get this all done so um, we don't run out of time and don't keep you all too long. So I did the background, I traced on my pattern. Now I'm ready to base coat the trees. What is base coating? I'm going to now uh, paint white. I chose to use white for these trees. When you base coat, it is always better to use several layers of thin paint than it is to get a glob of paint and try to cover cover like the orange in one, one um, stroke. And when I say thin, I don't mean thin like with water that we use with the script liner. I mean thin that when I fully load my brush and I'm fully loading a flat brush and I'm using a number 12 flat, I'm going back and forth on the side of the puddle of paint, fully loading with this one color. And then I'm going to um, just come on the inside my pattern and paint, paint the inside of the trunk trees. For me, it's easier to see the, I'm right handed, so it's easier for me to see the left side of the brush. So my eyes are always following the, the left corner of the brush. And this goes fast. And I'll just go like this. Just And this is what I mean by thin. Do you see how I don't have a lot of extra paint? I'm just stroking real quickly. And um, getting these trees painted here. Now, um, like I said, because I'm right-handed, um, looking on the left side of it, my brush is easier. So when I paint something wide like this, what I do is I turn my canvas upside down and that way I can then paint on this side. 
And these are just trees. So, I mean, we don't have to worry about staying in lines or any of those kind of things. But what I would say is, if you don't stay in your line, that's okay. I would just cover your tracing line though, because you don't want that to show. Because it will, it, if we paint over our tracing line, um, we won't see it. But if you don't trace over your, if you don't paint over your tracing line, then it, it will show and you won't be able to cover it up. We are going to shade, but even then, I, I wouldn't want to take the chance. I would rather just bring my tree outside the line. Notice how um, it doesn't take a lot of time. Now I do want to do three layers of base coating. When I painted this earlier, that's what I needed to get full, nice coverage. So after I paint this one layer, I'm going to have to get out the paint, uh, the hair dryer, or just step away for 15 minutes and let it dry. Now these little skinny ones, I can paint those. I'm on the chisel edge of my brush. Chisel, I push down. It's just like when we learn line work. We just bring it on down. And then to this wasn't a straight line, so I'm coming back on the chisel edge, um, filling in the filling in the tree trunk there. Miss. Always I'm getting paint. I'm trying to have you guys see that. Always getting paint coming down. And this one also, I'm on the chisel edge, just coming straight down. And you can go back and forth. This is just base coating. There. Okay. So you can see um, this is a little thinner. And that's fine because I'll be doing two more coats. One thing I want to caution everyone that when they are base coating and you're ready to get on, you're ready to move on to the next step and you're thinking, oh, my paint's dry enough. I don't need to wait till it's totally dry. Let me do my second coat now. I caution you not to do that. It probably isn't going to happen to me right now because my paint's still a little wet. But what happens is if your paint is almost dry and you come back and you start your next stroke, you can pull up some of the paint from the first layer and it makes what we call a hole. And there's no way you're ever going to be able to fill up that hole. You could paint layers and layers and layers and you're always going to see an indentation in your painting of where you pulled up paint. So let it dry totally and do as many layers of paint that you need to where you have solid white trees. Just because we don't have time for that, I went ahead and painted another canvas and this is the, the canvas we're going to be working on today. Um, same design, but it has three layers of white paint. And because this is a wrap canvas, when I did my pouncing, I did the sides. So that's something to always think about when you're doing a, um, a wrap canvas. Okay, so now let's go on how to paint the design on the birch tree. And I thought just for, um, oh gosh, forgot to turn on the lights. I hope you all saw that okay, but now you'll see a little better. I'm going to have the tree right here while we paint so we can see what we're doing here. I'm now using pure black multi-surface. I should have said before, just need a little bit. I The white was titanium white multi-surface. For this, I'm using my script liner. Okay, uh, if you remember from mm, 
uh, last week or the week before. With script liner, we use inky paint. Inky paint is paint from the bottle thinned down with water. I want thinner paint. I don't want inky paint. So what I'll do is I'm dipping my brush into my clean water of my brush basin and on the side of the puddle of paint, I'm gonna swish around. Now, when I discussed inky paint before, I dipped into the water at least three times. And I had that trick that, how do I know that it's thin enough? I would just swish my paint with my script liner on the plate. And if I could see my plate, then I knew that it was thin enough. Well, for this instance, like I said, I don't want it that thin. So I just use one drop of water. I don't have a fancy trick on how I know that it's thin enough. So what I'm going to do is just get a piece of paper, get some paint on my brush. I also, in this instance, not all, not when we do curly cues or any of those other type of strokes with the script liner, in this instant only, I'm going to just load like into half my brush. And I want to now do a test on a plain piece of paper to see if it's thin enough for movement. So I'm going to just scroll along here and see if it's moving carefully. And it is. So I know I, I got it thin enough. If it would have like done a lot of gl um, globbing, it would be too thick. If it was came out like it was like watercolor, then I knew it would be too thin. So this one actually is just like perfect. Now as I'm painting, I'm going to have to continue to come in and add water because it'll dry up on me pretty quickly. So here's um, how I'd like you to see me paint birch trees. I'm going to load up my script liner. with paint. I'm going to, this time I'm holding my brush like this. Normally when I paint, I have my, I hold it like a pencil, but I, for this, because I want to just uh, sputter down the side of the tree, I'm going to hold it um, in my hand like this with my thumb underneath. So I'm right here. I'm only going to be using like a fourth of the tip of my brush from the tip to the fourth, I'm going to have the tip of my script liner along the edge of my tree. So I touch right here and I'm just going to sputter it down. Now, don't, I'm not going to always have it on the canvas though. As I'm sputtering, I'm picking it up because if you notice the birch tree isn't solid black along the edge. There's some black here. There's some space. There's another area of black space. So as I sputter down, I am going to pick up my brush and try not to have too much black showing. I was going very, very, very light. Okay, I need to get a little more water in that paint though. So while this is wet, I'm now going to hold my brush like this. Um, it's between my two fingers and I am going to sort of steady myself with my baby finger. And I'm going to come back to these puddles of paint or these black spotches of paint and then just gently, almost on the tip of my brush, just do some swishing out. My brush is flat. That, that last fourth of the brush is flat on the, on the canvas. I'm not painting with the um, tip of my script liner. And I'm sticking with the areas that are black already. So I'm touching, pulling, touching, pulling, touch, pull. And can you, by just touching and pulling, you, you're getting all of these nice little streaks come out here. So we, let's see, we touch, pull, touch, pull. And let them, come, let them come out into the center of your tree. 
And also another thing while you're doing the same thing, touch pull, try to do a curve because you want to show the roundness of the tree. I'm going back into water. Um, like I said, the uh, paint dries pretty quickly. Let's see if I can get that in the camera's angle. And then for the other side, I'm just going to do it every now and then just touch pull. I'm not doing that sputtering look. Touch pull. Just going through here, adding some of those touch pulls. Now, if you notice some come all the way into the middle of the tree. So for there, we could come pull and then just make some extra swishes right there. Touch pull. Again, I'm not um, taking a lot of time, just touch pulling. And I do want to then on this point of my script liner, I'm going to make some of these uh, curvy lines, very light, very thin to uh, replicate those lines across the tree right there. There's a few right there. Too many. Okay, so that was one. Do another one. Got my brush fully loaded. I'm holding it flat with between my fingers and my thumb. And I'm just going to come down and sputter, sputter, sputter. Not too much. Just letting it, letting it come. Then on the holding it like this, I'm going to now like this do touch pull. Whoops, that got too much. Touch pull. If if this happens to you, don't worry about it. Just leave it dark. You could take a little bit of paint off your brush because that's what that's the problem. You you got a little too much paint. So I'm just coming through, strip going across like this. Coming through. Always being aware of the curve of the tree. I'll put some on this side. Not a lot. Oops, too much. I'll put some in the middle here. When I do these lines in the middle, I'm on the tip of my brush. Tip on the very tip. Okay. I'm going to go get some more water. Holding my brush flat with, on my fingers and then just Gently sputtering down here. If if you find that you're having to press hard and that will me make messy sputtering, it's because you just ran out of paint. So go back and get some more paint. And then I'll go side by side. Just real quick. Don't don't, you know, really think too much about it. You're just making these. My brush is flat. I'm making a few of these little curved thin lines right there. And like I said, if, it, if sometimes more gets in there, it's okay. For the little ones, it's the exact same way. It's just that you, ha you have less space to move on. Here we have this whole wide trunk. This one is little, so I'm just going to, whoa, I'm going to just screw it go down a little bit here on one side. And then pull mostly where those darker spaces were. That's where I want those lines. Then here I could stick some in the middle, maybe some on the other side. Touch, pull here, touch back and forth. Like that and some thin lines in the middle. Okay, last one. Just coming down. If I go outside the lines a little bit, I'm not concerned because we have our one other area that we have to do is shading and that will clean it all up. Touch, touch. 
And then I want some on the other side to come in. I'm just very gently making these little lines. Always in a curve. Touch, pull. Yeah. There we go. Now I um okay. Okay, no questions on that. I'm going to now go into the shading of the tree. I'm going back to my number 12. Are you scrolling down? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. Um, my husband was able to help me again today so I don't have to concentrate on comments and things he can tell me and I can answer as I'm painting. Now for shading, I'm going to head and do the, the whole shade of the outside of the tree in yellow ochre. It was just my choice. Um, I didn't want to worry about the background colors and changing colors like maybe you might think yellow ochre is too dark to go on the yellow. It, it, it's not. It will, it will just be really fine whether you on yellow ochre, the brilliant yellow, or the Pueblo um, to float. Um, we put our brush in floating medium, and then on the side of my brush, I side load. Let me do that here for you. I side load into yellow ochre. And then watching carefully the corner of my brush, I'm just going to come along the outside of the tree on the flat of my brush. And because I've side loaded and gone back and forth, I'm getting a nice blend from dark to what I say is nothingness as it comes down. So there, see how that allows the tree to pop out. Then again, I'm going to turn it um, to the side, side load, and paint this side. See? And this is where you can clean up your edges if you get out of, um, if you got out of the line. Debbie that Manetta has commented that is looking good and Pat Houston's come on. Oh, hi, Pat. And thank you, Debbie. Yeah, it looks real. Yeah, it's, um, and you can also like when I'm, when I was shading, I thought, oh, you know, I think I would like something right here. So what I did is I just got my script liner and I just want to touch and pull some little colors right over there. So, I mean, we, we can always tweak it as we're doing these final stages. Now, one thing um, I need to say, I want to shade the trees where they're intersecting, intersecting, but you really, really, really need to let that dry. So I will try doing that, um, but we'll see how that goes because I it, it, it probably is not dry. But what I want to shade it in is medium gray. So to make that, I'm going to have some white and then just a smidgen of licorice or pure black and uh, go back and forth and see how that makes a really nice gray. Clean out my brush because I only want it to be side loaded. Got fully loaded in floating medium and then come here and then just put it on the side of the brush and then right here for example this tree is on top of this tree so i need to now shade this tree you always shade the the back tree come down here like this and that now that shows that this tree is on top of that one the the other tree that is um 
over one another is right up here. So let me come back and get some more gray. And I will um, shade right here on this side. There. I personally, on my sample, did not shade the sides of the trees. Um, it, it could give a nice look. I just knew that I didn't want too much shading because I knew I wanted to get the, the whiteness of the tree. That was the whole purpose of this, was to have the white and the black on, on a background. But just for demonstration purposes, because you may want to do that, I'm going to get a little bit of this light gray. I need to make some more, though. I ran out. See how if you get too much black, oh my gosh, you got a mess. It takes you forever to get that into light gray. There we go. I'm going to clean off my brush here. And also, no, I don't have my palette knife, so I'm also going to have to just side load right here. If I had my palette knife handy, I would move all of that into one nice puddle of paint. But you can, if this is what you would like to do, take your side loaded brush of medium gray and shade up one side of your tree. It does give a nice look. You are going over your your the the dark that you just um, you know did. Let's go up and down. Just go here. But but that gives a look. It even helps with the to give a roundness. So. Okay, that was um, a quick demonstration on that. When you do this, take your time and you'll make these gorgeous trees. I um, was playing around with background colors and I thought this was sort of an interesting look. But um, this one to me pops out for sunset or for autumn. So, um, if no questions, let me turn my camera back up and I shall say goodbye. Right here. Whoa. There we go. Not yet. Okay. There we go. Okay. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, like I said, it was a quick demonstration. If you have any questions, let me know. My email is the painted vine at gmail.com. And also, if you are new to the video and you missed my first um, introduction, um, I have a full set of skill builders here in my studio, and I got a full uh, level one at home certification kit, and I, I would like them out. So if you're at all interested in wanting to be certified in level one, please send me an email. And we will discuss details, payment plans, and then as soon as I get back from convention, we will start your lessons. So, okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Katarina just piped in and said thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, alrighty. Okay, we'll say goodbye. See you next week.